As big a series as Dark Souls is, you can't deny that the bosses are the most iconic part. Some are pushovers, while others have a wasteland of broken controllers behind them. So I'm cataloging every boss across all three Dark Souls games and their DLC. Asylum Demon this demon is the only thing standing between you and freedom from the undead asylum. He's scary at first, but after gearing up and landing a plunging attack, you'll take him down without too much trouble. Taurus Demon As you make your way towards the undead parish, the Taurus Demon will jump down and block your path. You could always fight him head on, but the safer option is to run to the tower behind you and keep hitting him with plunging attacks. Bell Gargoyle You finally reach the bell tower, but you still have to stop the bell gargoyle guarding it. Well, both of them. A second one shows up after you do enough damage to the first one. Aim for the tail. If you cut it off, you'll get the gargoyle tail axe. Capra Demon Honestly, the hardest thing about the Capra Demon fight is the lack of space and those damn dogs. Try and run past them as soon as you enter the fog wall and take them out. Once they're gone, the Capra Demon itself is a pushover, especially when you have firebombs. Gaping Dragon I thought the rats and the sludge piles were bad, but the Gaping Dragon has to be the most disgusting thing in the depths. But even with all those teeth, he's not too tough. Cut his tail off for the Demon Great Axe and aim for his little lizard head for some extra damage. Moonlight Butterfly The Moonlight Butterfly is pretty to look at, and if you're not a magic user, that's about all you'll be able to do until it lands. You can dodge its spells or just block them with the magic resistant shield. After it lands, wail on it before it takes flight again. Great Grey Wolf Sif this poor dog is misunderstood. They're only guarding the grave of their old buddy, Artorius the Abyss Walker. Artorius protected them from the Abyss, so now Sif keeps everyone from taking his ring to save them from the same fate. And you kill them, you monster. Stray Demon If you're feeling nostalgic, you can take a trip back to the Undead Asylum and try your hand at fighting the Stray Demon. He looks like the original Asylum Demon, but this guy's AoE magic makes him way tougher. It's worth the trouble though. The Stray Demon drops a Titanite Slab. Chaos Witch Quelog. Quelog is the daughter of the Witch of Izalith, along with her younger sister, the Fair Lady. The Flame of Chaos corrupted them, fusing them with demonic spiders. Her sister has since become blind and weak, so Quelog stands guard at the bottom of Blighttown to protect her. Ceaseless Discharge The Ceaseless Discharge was the youngest kid and only son of the Witch of Izalith. We know the Flame of Chaos corrupted his sisters along with Quelog, but it transformed him into the molten giant that we see. He watches over one of his dead sisters in the Demon Ruins, hopeful that his remaining sisters are watching over him from Lost Izalith. Iron Golem The Iron Golem stands at the top of Sen's fortress, just waiting for someone to try and get to Anor Londo. His soul was forged from the bone of an everlasting dragon. That sounds cool, but too bad you can just knock the Iron Golem off the cliff. Dragon Slayer Ornstein and Executioner Smo. This is the classic odd couple of Dark Souls. While Ornstein was the honorable captain of the Four Knights of Gwyn, Smo was just the executioner for the royal family of Anorlando. He always wanted to be a Knight of Gwyn, but grinding up and eating the bones of his victims kinda disqualified him for the job. At some point, these two were tasked with guarding the Princess of Sunlight within the cathedral. Dark Son Gwendolyn Gwendolyn was born as the last son of Lord Gwyn, but he was raised as a girl because of his strong ties to Moonlight. By the time you roll up to Anorlando, Gwendolyn is the last god remaining, and has covered the entire city with an illusion. If you don't kill him, you can join his covenant, the Blade of the Dark Moon. Crossbreed Priscilla Even though Priscilla is Seath's daughter, the gods feared her and her life hunt scythe. So they locked her away in the painted world of Ariamis. She won't try to kill you unless you hit her first. I mean, how else are you going to get the life hunt scythe? Oh, and make sure you cut Priscilla's tail to get her dagger. Demon Fire Sage Before this guy turned into an oh-so-familiar demon, he was considered the last master of the original fire arts. Then the Flame of Chaos went and did its thing, corrupting him into the Demon Fire Sage. Centipede Demon Way back when, the Ceaseless Discharge's sisters gave him an orange charred ring to help ease his molten burns. Too bad he dropped the ring, and the Centipede Demon emerged in the exact spot he dropped it once the Flame of Chaos went haywire. The Bed of Chaos The mother of all demons, literally. The Witch of Izalith tried to recreate the first flame, but ended up with the Flame of Chaos instead. The Bed of Chaos devoured her and two of her Daughters of Chaos, trapping them. Pinwheel Pinwheel is unsettling. Looks like this thing is made up of three different souls, the father, the mother, and the child. Apparently, Pinwheel stole power from Gravelord Nido to rule over the catacombs itself. Gravelord Nido Nido is one of the original lords who fought the dragons alongside Gwyn. As the first of the dead, Nido used his powers to bombard the dragons with disease and miasma. Then, he retired to the Tomb of the Giants, living on as an overseer of all things death and leader of the Gravelord Servant's Covenant. Four Kings 
Together, the four kings ruled New Londo, so Gwyn granted them a single lord's soul to split between them. All four eventually turned evil, and their loyal knights became the life-draining Dark Wraiths. New Londo was flooded to trap the four kings and their Dark Wraiths and keep them from causing more trouble. Seat the Scaleless Seath turned on his own kind during the war against the Everlasting Dragons, so Gwyn awarded him dukedom and a Lord's Soul Fragment. Seath also got his claws on a primordial crystal, granting him immortality. Cut his tail to get the Moonlight Greatsword. Gwyn, Lord of Cinder After finding the Lord's Soul and defeating the dragons, Gwyn took the throne as King of Lordran during the Age of Fire. When the flames began to fade, Gwyn sacrificed his soul to prolong the Age of Fire, turning him hollow. Sanctuary Guardian The Sanctuary Guardian is the first boss you'll face in the DLC. You've got to get past this manticore looking thing if you want to make it into the Ulaseel Sanctuary. Aim for its tail if you want to cut it off and use it as a weapon. Knight Artorius Sir Artorius of the Abyss would hunt the Dark Wraiths of the Abyss thanks to his trusty ring. When he traveled to Ulaseel, he and Sif were overwhelmed by the Abyss that Manus created. Artorius used his cleansing great shield to protect Sif before succumbing to the curse of the Dark. Black Dragon Calamite Calamite was the only surviving ancient dragon, and was seriously dangerous. Even the high ups in Anorlando were afraid of this thing. Make sure you get some help before Hawkeye Goth, and cut Calamite's tail to get the Obsidian Greatsword. Manus, Father of the Abyss At one point, Manus was human, but his humanity went out of control and he became the Father of the Abyss. He captured Princess Dusk, but once the Chosen Undead defeats him, his soul splits into fragments that become sentient. Okay, fast forward a few hundred or thousand years or whatever, and now we're in Dark Souls 2. The Last Giant The Last Giant once ruled the giants as they invaded Drang Lake. When he was defeated by an unknown hero, he was trapped beneath the forest of fallen giants and has remained there ever since. The Pursuer The Pursuer... pursues. This guy pops up all over the place, presumably hunting undead like you. No one knows who the Pursuer serves, but you can serve it its own ass in the forest of fallen giants. Dragon Rider. The Dragon Riders served valiantly in King Vendrick's army, riding powerful wyverns as they laid the foundation of Drang Lake. Becoming a Dragon Rider required an immense amount of training, and failure meant getting torn to pieces by the same beasts they tried to control. Twin Dragon Riders. Uh, yeah. They're just two Dragon Riders. One shoots at you with a great bow before you get the first one down to about half health. Old Dragon Slayer. So, I know this guy looks like Ornstein, but he's probably something completely different. He uses dark abilities instead of lightning, so he may be a corrupted version of the original Dragon Slayer, but nobody knows for sure. Flexile Sentry After making your way through No Man's Wharf and summoning the pirate ship, you'll find the Flexile Sentry waiting for you below deck. As you fight, the water level rises, making it tougher to move around. Ruin Sentinels they may look like armored guards, but the Ruined Sentinels are actually just souls that haunt suits of armor. These three particular Sentinels are named Yahim, Riche, and Alessia. The Jailers of the Lost Bastille created them to guard the prison. Belfry Gargoyles Word must have spread about what happened to those two Bell Gargoyles, because you can fight up to five Belfry Gargoyles at one time. But despite their boosted numbers, they're no match for the Bearer of the Curse. Lost Sinner the Lost Sinner has a dark past, so dark that she imprisoned herself for whatever sins she committed. She might have tried to light the first flame, but now she rots away as an undead in pain and isolation. Skeleton Lords There's only three proper Skeleton Lords, but you'll have to square up against a small army of skeletons when you fight them. The Lords used to hunt down undead for the old Iron King, but they fell victim to the very curse they fought against. Executioner's Chariot when the Skeleton Lords would round up the undead, they'd throw them into the undead purgatory to deal with the Executioner's Chariot. This thing, and its horse, exist only to punish and torture imprisoned undead. Covetous Demon Once upon a time, the Covetous Demon was a simple man who fell in love with Queen Mitha. She turned him down, so to cope, he basically ate and ate until he transformed into the monster that you fight. Mitha, the Baneful Queen When Mitha was human, she was engaged to a prince, but he ended up dumping her for someone else. To regain his affection, she started pumping herself with a poison that was supposed to increase her beauty. Naturally, it turned her into a serpentine monster instead. Smelter Demon The Smelter Demon is the one who killed the old Iron King, and is ultimately responsible for the downfall of his kingdom. No one knows if the king created this walking hulk of iron, or if it had always been there. Smelter Demon Blue Oh yeah, and there's another Smelter Demon waiting in the Iron Passage. But this one's much tougher. Blue fire burns hotter, you know? Old Iron King The Old Iron King's kingdom was powerful, but the weight of all that iron sunk his keep into the lava below. He was killed by the Smelter Demon, and his soul was possessed by an evil presence in the flames, transforming him into a monster. Royal Rat Vanguard if you seek an audience with the Rat King, you've got to prove yourself by beating his royal rat vanguard. After you slaughter all his minions, the Rat King will invite you into his covenant as a protector of the Grave of Saints. 
Royal Rat Authority. Of course, if you don't want to fight a bunch of rats to prove your worth to the Rat King, you can also fight a giant one, the Royal Rat Authority, that kind of looks like a dog for some weird reason, the Rotten. The Rotten rests at the bottom of the Black Gulch. This massive blob of bodies appreciates all the refuse that has been thrown away, and is even trying to fix a statue when you run into it. Scorpionus Najka. Najka and her lover, Man Scorpion Tark, were created by a mysterious master who has long since disappeared. They lived peacefully in the shaded ruins, but eventually, Najka became so violent that she and Tark began to war against each other. Prowling Magus in the Congregation Since the spiders took over Brightstone Cove Seldora, Magus has been leading some of the villagers in the practice of dark arts. This warlock has been taken over by dark magic, and he puppets his congregation to carry out his orders. The Duke's Dear Freya Freya used to be Duke Seldora's little pet spider. As the writhing ruin grew more powerful, it used Freya as a host and transformed her into the massive monster that you have to fight. Looking Glass Knight When King Vendrick and his kingdom were still around, the Looking Glass Knight was his loyal lieutenant. He would test any warrior looking to serve Vendrick. Now that the king's gone into hiding, the Looking Glass Knight stands guard as the first line of defense. Dark Lurker The Dark Lurker lurks in the dark. Really, that's about all anyone knows. Once you light three areas of the Dark Chasm of Old, you'll be transported to this thing's domain to do battle. Demon of Song Nobody knows where the Demon of Song came from, but it does have a strong appetite for human flesh. Some priestesses locked it away inside the Shrine of Amana, but now that they're gone, Frogface sings their song, hoping to lure in some more food. Velstad the Royal Aegis. When Drangleic was in its prime, Velstadt commanded Vendrick's forces as his number two guy. Even when Vendrick fled, Velstadt followed him into the undead crypt, loyally protecting his master to the very end. Vendrick. Vendrick once ruled a prosperous Drangleic, but everything went sour after he invaded the land of the giants and stole a powerful artifact. He used the artifact to create golems and build his castle, but the giants eventually retaliated, and Drangleic was ravaged by a curse of the undead. Vendrick fled to the undead crypt, turned hollow, and now just kind of walks around in a circle. Guardian Dragon Honestly, this thing isn't all that special. It's just a red drake that Vendrick's older brother Aldia tasked with guarding the dragon Airy. Even then, Aldia just wanted to see if the Guardian Dragon would even follow his directions. Ancient Dragon The ancient dragon looks like the real deal, but is it really a true dragon? When you kill it, it drops the soul of a giant, and you can only actually get its soul by using the Ashen Mist Heart to travel to a memory. Apparently, Aldia was trying to create his own dragon, so this guy might just be one of his bootleg byproducts. Giant Lord this guy look familiar? He's the last giant when he was in his prime. The giant lord led the rest of the giants in their invasion of Drang Lake. They laid waste to the kingdom to reclaim the artifact that Ventrix stole years earlier. Throne Watcher and Throne Defender Their names say it all. The Throne Defender defends the throne, and the Throne Watcher watches it. I mean, the Throne of Want is sacred, and protecting it is so important that it's a two-man job. Nashandra Nashandra formed from a fragment of Manus' soul, and has craved power ever since. She seduced Vendrick and encouraged him to attack the giants, but Vendrick figured out she was after the Throne of Want all along. He locked himself away, but Nashandra manipulated the bearer of the curse to open the way to the throne for her. Aldia, Scholar of the First Sin Vendrick's older brother helped found Drangleic, but he quickly secluded himself in his keep. Aldia became fascinated with the undead, so Vendrick banished him to his keep to work on his sick, monstrous experiments. In time, Aldia himself was turned into a grotesque monster. Afflicted Grave Robber, Ancient Soldier Varg, and Serah the Old Explorer Okay, I don't know who these three are, or why they're there, but they are there to ruin your day, if you let them. One's got Havel set, another has Alva's, but I don't know how they got them. Elana, the Squalid Queen Like Nishandra, Elana was a fragment of Manus' soul, but an especially wrathful one. She married the Sunken King, and when the Sunken City was destroyed, she started gathering souls to take revenge on the ones responsible. Sin, the Slumbering Dragon Sin slept for many years, building up poison as the Sunken King built the city of Shulva around him. Once Sir Yorg and his Drake Blood Knights showed up, they attacked Sin, and the dragon released all of its built-up poison into Shulva, killing Yorg and the city's people. Fume Knight the Fume Knight is head over heels for Nadalia, the Bride of Ash. But before he served her, he went by Raim and worked as one of King Vendrick's most trusted warriors. The two had a falling out, and Raim was cast out as a traitor. Sir Alon When Sir Alon arrived from the east, he helped the Iron King build his kingdom as his right-hand man. Once the Iron King was on top, Sir Alon bailed to wander the land, and the Iron King named all his knights after him. Burnt Ivory King the Ivory King ran Eleum Lois as a benevolent ruler, and even took an Alsana, a child of dark. When he discovered a great chaos beneath Eleum Lois, the Ivory King took a handful of knights to try and contain it. Unfortunately, they were all corrupted, leaving Alsana to look after the now-frozen kingdom. Ava, the King's Pet 
Also, turns out that the Ivory King is basically the Joe Exotic of Dark Souls. Ava is one of his seven pet tigers and is specifically tasked with protecting Alsana, and it's also invisible before you clear the storm. Lud and Zalin, the King's Pets Lud and Zalin are another two of the Ivory King's seven pets. Their job is to mercifully kill any exiles of Elaim Lois. So that's all the bosses that Dark Souls 2 has, now it's time to move over to Lothric and the bosses of Dark Souls 3. Udex Gundir This is the long, corrupted, imprisoned version of Champion Gundir. We'll get to him in a bit, but just know that this version is a lot easier to fight. He's the tutorial boss, you know? Vort of the Boreal Valley these guys are all corrupted by Pontiff Sullivan's eyes, which turns them into beasts. Vort just seems to be more bestial than the others. Curse Rotted Greatwood The Curse Rotted Greatwood used to be your average everyday spirit tree. Once the undead settlement fell victim to all kinds of curses, the worst ones got sealed inside the tree, morphing it into the grotesque, sack-spotted Greatwood that we know. Crystal Sage This Crystal Sage is actually one of a pair of twins. Big Hat Logan trained both of them, and this particular sage taught the undead legion of Faron how to use magic. That's where those new Faron spells came from. Abyss Watchers These guys run the undead legion as one binded soul that moves between bodies. The Abyss Watchers are big fans of the Wolf Blood Master, who's probably Artorius. So their whole purpose is to vanquish even the slightest signs of the Abyss. Deacons of the Deep There's a lot of deacons, but Archdeacon Royce runs the show. Once Aldrich heads to the Boreal Valley, Royce and his squad of high priests stayed behind in the cathedral to help watch over Aldrich's coffin. High Lord Wolnir Apparently, Wolnir sentenced a lot of people to death. Now, he's trapped in the Abyss. His only protection is a holy sword that the gods gave him and three armlets he lifted off of dead clerics. But without those, he's lost to the Abyss forever. Old Demon King Old doesn't do the old Demon King justice. Sure, he already looks ancient and haggard, but he's the last one to have ever seen Isolith firsthand. Like, that's really old. Pontiff Sullivan Sullivan was a sorcerer born in the painted world of Ariandel. Once he discovered the profaned flame, he became power hungry, creating the Outrider Knights and worshipping Aldrich. He named himself Pontiff and even fed Gwendolyn to Aldrich. Yorm the Giant Yorm descends from an ancient conqueror and started leading the same people his ancestors once dominated. He tried to extinguish the profaned flame, but the flame destroyed his kingdom, and Yorm locked himself away within his profaned capital. Aldrich, Devourer of Gods Aldrich knew the Age of Deep Sea was coming, but he wasn't sweating it. He was already eating powerful gods. When he ate Gwendolyn, he even took on his appearance. And so, Aldrich was locked up and forced to become a Lord of Cinder. Dancer of the Boreal Valley At one point, the Dancer was just a daughter of Irithyll's royal family. Pontiff Sullivan gave her two special swords and then exiled her as one of his outrider knights. Dragon Slayer Armor This thing is just a big metal puppet. The Pilgrim Butterflies are the ones controlling this hollow suit of armor, but the Dragon Slayer Armor itself still remembers hunting with its old master. Osiris, the Consumed King Osiris used to be King of Lothric, but experimenting with his royal blood led him down a dark path. He discovered the worship of Seath the Scaleless in the Grand Archives and eventually lost his mind. Is Osiris actually holding his invisible baby, Ocelot, or is he just imagining it? Champion Gundir Yeah, remember Udex Gundir? Well, this is the same guy in his prime. You travel back in time to the Dark Age to do battle with Gundir and the Untended Graves. He tried to rekindle the First Flame himself, but was too late. Lothric, the Younger Prince Oh yeah, and you also fight Lothric's older brother, Lorien. Even though Lothric was born weak and frail, he was fated to be a Lord of Cinder. Lorien shares the burden of Lothric's illness, turning him mute and making his legs useless. The two brothers disappeared for a time, content to watch the first flame die out. Ancient Wyvern There isn't much history to this ancient wyvern, which makes sense because there's not much of a fight either. You just have to run your way up the ruins and stab him in the head with a plunging attack. One hit and it's done. Nameless King at least the Nameless King fight is cool enough for the both of them. He was a dragon-slaying god of war before he swapped teams and started helping the ancient dragons. This guy is probably Gwyn's firstborn son, since that same person had their name scrubbed from history. You know, a Nameless King. Soul of Cinder I'd ask Gwyn myself, but his soul is a part of the Soul of Cinder. This boss is a conglomerate of every Lord of Cinder that has ever been, including the Chosen Undead and the Bearer of the Curse from Dark Souls 1 and 2. I mean if they chose to link the fire. Sister Frida Frida used to be called Elfrida and is the sister of Yuria of Londor. Frida was the first Ash to enter the Painted World. Ariandel restored the Painted World, met her, and the two decided to protect this Painted World by extinguishing the flame that would burn it. And yeah, you have to fight him too. Champions Gravetender and Gravetender Great Wolf The Gravetender and his pet wolf guard the grave of a long-gone undead champion. This champion started the undead matches in the Hollow Arena for undead to duke it out across the world. Assuming their internet is good enough. Demon in Pain and Demon from Below and the Demon Prince After you fight through the Demon in Pain and the Demon from Below, you'll square up against the Demon Prince himself. 
All these demons are born from chaos and constantly fight to keep the fading flame of their demon prince lit. Half-Light, Spear of the Church Half-Light was one of a number of missionaries sent to the Ringed City. When all the other missionaries bailed after witnessing the terrors of the Ringed City, Half-Light stuck around to protect Princess Filianor. Dark Eater Medir Medir is a descendant of the Arch Dragons and was brought up by the gods to do battle against the Dark. Even though the gods are long gone, Medir is still fulfilling his duty waging his own war against Dark Forces. Slave Knight Gale Everything Gale has done was in service to a woman in the painted world of Ariandel. He sought the dark soul for her as a pigment of her painted world, but ended up literally consuming it and losing part of his humanity. So Gale is the last boss of the entire Dark Souls series, but there's plenty more From Software bosses to explore. Demon Souls, Bloodborne, Sekiro, and who knows what Elden Ring is going to have whenever it comes out. If you want to see more, let us know in the comments and make sure you subscribe to the leaderboard. All players are welcome, even hollow and undead ones. I'm your host Dan, and thank you for watching.